Welcome from the Constitution. Let's go talk relationship. Yes. And you see, the funny thing is that the Constitution also helps relationships. As Alera said earlier, where her power ends <laughs> is where mine begins. So there is a constitutional relationship here. <laughs> She's laughing. But the relationship is a bedrock of life. There is barely any human that can thrive on his or her own without the other. This, however, requires that we connect and build and sustain amongst many and other and nurture and nurture mm. and sometimes quarrel and reconcile <laughs> it's part of a relationship and communicate you know we talked communication last week identical twins mm. are from one egg they still quarrel thank you very much thank you very much <laughs> so, but um, to understand health you and living Building relationships, that's what we're looking at today. And to help us discuss this, we have Dukbe Akinshi, who's a certified coach and trainer. Hi. Welcome. Good morning. Thank morning. you. Good morning. And on the other side, we have Ido Ola Diamond, who's also a certified coach and trainer. Good morning. And the uh, head of people relations, right? Yes. In the very... What's venture the, Garden Group. The venture Garden Group. Head of people relations. So let me start with you. You deal with people every day. Yes. What, how important is a relationship? Okay, thank you very much. So, relationship actually holds life because we're created as social animals. So, which means that we're not created to be in isolation. So, we have to work with people. But hermits are human beings too. Yes, so, so what happened is that where we get our energy from is when we have contact with people when we leave an imprint on them. So in every day of our life, and that is one of the major reasons why you realize that in correction center, one of the ways you punish man is actually to put him in isolation. Because the stronger desire of man actually is to connect with, with people, other people, which is relationship. Hmm. Yeah. So when you say the major bit of, of man's living is connecting with people, what then does it mean to build a relationship? Okay, um, thank you very much for that question. Um, you know, like Ola said earlier, you know, um, what drives us as human beings is our ability to relate with one another. Now, if you have never met with someone, there is no way we can come together to work. And so there is a place of first establishing a contact or making a connection with people and then taking it from there, identifying your interests, your values, and then seeing whether actually you can relate well or you can work effectively together. So that's what it's about, building relationships. Mm. Hmm. Mm. So how do you build and sustain? You, you have now, you've made the contact. Mm -hmm. You find that, yes, you have certain areas where you can... Relate. actually relate and have a conversation. So then you proceed to build and then you strive to sustain that relationship. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Absolutely. Right. So how do you do that? Awesome. Right. So as, as a people, we have needs. Right. We're all seated in this place. You have a need. I have a need. Yes, we're social beings. But then the truth is each and every one of us, you're looking for something. So in my connecting with you, I should be meeting a need, and you should be meeting a need for me as well. And so as we contact, we're exchanging value to one another. So in me meeting your needs, meeting my needs as well on your side, we're building relationship, right? Somebody once said that relationship is like a ship. It takes you from one place to the other. So my constant interaction with you, I should be seeking to add value to you as much as you're adding value to me. In that is building relationship. Um, Do you get yeah, what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> tricky. Let me switch, bring, come to you, Joe. Okay. okay, so you come into a place. Let me use coming into a place. You meet someone. You've met. Sometimes it just introduce you. For instance, you meet me. Hi, my name is Nelta. My name is Ido. No, no handshakes, please. No handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name. <laughs> but there's really nothing to say, okay, yeah, we met, we met on this platform, we met here. So how do you begin to build 
that relationship. Yes, I have needs, you have needs. I may not know your needs, you don't know my needs, mm -hmm. but we are here. So how do we begin to build relationships? Okay, so where you start from in every relationship is what I call common and shared objective. So when you start in a relationship, you build it from what is common to both of us. So no matter how, how much you meet anybody, what will make you want to see me again is when you realize that we have something that overlap with each other. Let me give you an instance. So I get to a bar, maybe in an hotel, then I meet you, then I realize that you're an Arsenal fan, I'm an Arsenal fan. Now, that means that at that point in time, you can there's already <laughs> a common point, yeah. okay? Sometimes you get to a place, you realize that you're married and married, you're talking about your wife, I'm also engrossed in my wife, I realize that family is important to you, it's also important to me, that becomes a common point. Yeah, but it also depends on what I'm discussing about my wife. Yes, I'm exactly. I'm discussing that my wife is mean to me, <laughs> <laughs> and she's not. Okay, so, so when such happens, then you realize that there's a common objective. And let me mention the objective also from another point which you have actually raised. So when you realize that you're talking about your wife in a different way, which means you are communicating the negative emotions about your wife. And I realize that I'm, I'm a family coach. I love my wife and I expect men to love their wife. It means you already have a common objective because what is my pleasure is your pain. So it means I have things to offer to you. Then it means we can begin to start a conversation. So if I tell you and then say, you know your wife can be the best person in the world, you will tell me and say, no, it's not possible. Okay, we'll take then a moment. I'll and when we come back, we'll look at when you don't find a common ground, what do you do? Thank you for seeing with us. We're still talking building relationships. Um, Ido, you were talking about when you meet. And the question I ask is, what happens when you don't find common grounds? What do you do? Okay, so when you don't find common ground, so what you do is that, and that is where I, you know, I listened to the program last week and I heard when Bridget was talking about you know, seeking nonverbal clues. So what you do is that you seek what is not being said and it's actually what the person likes. So for example, you get to, you get to see somebody and you realize that the person likes fashion from his appearance. You realize that the person likes car from his appearance. So what you do is that you go and search up. Sometimes on the media, you look and check the person's profile. By the time I get your handle and I see what you post about, by the time I get your Twitter handle, I know what you post. I already know what you naturally like. And that will be my next follow-up point with you. But the point is that when I still don't find what interests you, there is no way you get attracted to me, which is very much important. So I need to go and look for it, even though you're not expressing it yet, which is very much important. You're going to say something to me. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean. <laughs> Again, you're going to have to do that work, depending on what exactly it is you're looking to derive from that relationship, right? Um, so sometimes you're, you, you, know, you need to step back and ask yourself, why am I even actually seeking to nurture this relationship? The question is not every time you have to build relationship with everyone, sure. in my opinion. So sometimes you connect with people intentionally or not intentionally. People decide to have these walls between them and you. But of course, constant communication and a sustained interest in that particular relationship will make you go the extra mile to want to know what is it that I share with this person or what is that thing I can use to. So very valid, you know, to keep. When do you build? and sustain the relationship when? So thank you very much for that. So when you build a relationship is, number one is that you don't have to be selfish. So you build a relationship ahead of the point that you will need that relationship. So that is why you don't use people, you invest in people. So what I like to advise people first is that go into a relationship based on what you want to give, not what you want to get at the beginning. This is very much important because you need to feed a relationship. Every loyalty in relationship has to be fed every other day. You don't feed it, loyalty and commitment to relationship definitely dies. So you go first based on what you want to give. Like I like to say, your, pack, your package attracts men, but your content keeps them. You need to look attractive to the person. It means that I have a need, and you have a need in which I can really meet, and you are desiring to look up to me. You want to see me every other day because I'm offering you something. The more I go that my extra mile to meet those needs for you, you start, you start building up the relationship. So the day I need you, it becomes like very easy for me to call upon you. But you realize that in our lifetime, sometimes you want to call somebody, you need somebody, I want to call the person, you realize that you've not called the person in a while, then you start feeling bad mm. that I've not called this person in a while. Now, that is the guilt of not feeding that relationship. 
So you build it before you even have a need of that relationship. So how do you be, how do you nurture that relationship? Sustain. sustain. That's the sustain part. Sustain. So, so I mean, just before I, I go into that question, I was going to say when you build relationships every day, right? There are people you encounter every day. Now, um, relationship is twofold. There are people you have contact with, whether at your place of work or people you live with. And so you have the opportunity to invest and nurture those relationships because you have the privilege. Now, there are people you don't get to see every day, maybe people that you went to school with and all of that. The question is, how do you then sustain these relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what you need to do again is step back. So um, depending on the people you meet with every day, so at home, family members, of course, because you live with these people, you already know what they want, you know what their interests are, you know what their needs are, you need to meet people's needs. You know, Diamond said something, he said, you need to find out what people need and give in to that. You need to nurture, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Now, for people, you need to keep seeking what do people need. So, for instance, I get to work, I work in a place where, you know, I can choose to sit in my own space, but then I choose to go outside my space, find out about people. You know, you're in a meeting, your next person is not there. And then you're asking, where is X, Y, Z? Oh, she's not here because we don't know. And then you pick up your phone, oh, babe, I just thought to check on you. Is everything okay? Now, nurturing relationships is not ne necessarily um, buying gifts or making calls in that sense. It's just about having the heart that cares to know about others, reaching out to them, and of course, finding out what their needs are and being able to meet them at the point of those needs. You know, can I build a relationship without anybody? Can I have a relationship without anybody? <laughs> <laughs> with yourself? I mean, hermits. Okay. I, I, I mentioned this earlier, but I don't think you heard me when I said hermits are human beings too. Okay. But they more or less like stay on their own. Okay, so, so I, I, I would like to answer that. So being a mind coach, so today's what we call mindfulness. Okay, so... And Mindful. that is mindfulness. Okay. So mindfulness. So that is being self-conscious about yourself. Trust me, you cannot give love when you don't have self-love. So that is why we say it's okay to be selfish sometimes because you need to love yourself. So in relationship building, you don't build relationship out of the point of you are discomforted, out of the point of you need somebody to compliment you. So you build a relationship out of the fact that you are convinced that you want to build a relationship. Sometimes some people get in a relationship because they feel like they are short in one area, so they need somebody to compliment them. No, that is not that way. You go into a relationship with your wholeness. So what we're saying... Oh, hold on. So yeah. I am feeling um, I'm lacking in something. And Dupe can add to that. I shouldn't go seeking Dupe to build a relationship. No, I'm talking about when you have inferior mindset. When you feel you are not deserving of mm. yourself, okay. that is different from I'm lacking. So when I believe or I don't trust myself, I don't have self-confidence in myself, it means when I go to Dukwe, I'm looking for Dukwe to cover my shadows. When Dukwe is not there, I easily fight Dukwe back. It's different from I want to learn how to communicate, then I go to Dukwe to teach me how to communicate. That is different. So sometimes, and it happens in marriage a lot, people go into marriage sometimes because they lack their independence. And there are times in relationship in which your husband wants to have his space. So because you want to have his space, you feel not complete because you want to have his space. But guess what? It's okay for you to allow him to have his space. There are some times in which your friends want to have their space. It's okay that you to allow them to, allow, to, to actually have their space. Don't stalk on people because those are the red flags of relationship when you overbuild. There are times in which you go too far. You can overbuild. You can oh, overbuild. Wow. I'm writing that down. So, <laughs> So you can overbuild, and that's what we call stalking on people. So, you know, in that place, you are showing your inefficiencies in that relationship. And guess what? When you treat them like celebrity, they see you as a fan. Hmm. Please take note in relationship. When you treat them like celebrity, they see you as a fan. You have tried to fan them. They need to see you as somebody who is adding value. Then they become your fan. Hmm. It's the other way around. You don't mm. build relationship out of the fact that you feel inferior. You build relationship out of the fact that you need me. I, I need also you. I need, need you. you. Two way street. Yeah. Okay. okay. Two ways. Back to uh, that word that he mentioned earlier, the hermit. Is there something wrong with the hermit or the recluse? Uh, 
so I mean, I've never, I've never encountered one, so I really don't know. We know but that I, they exist. Well, they do exist. Mm. Uh, and I, I mean, I would like to ride on what Diamond said. You know, you have to start with having a relationship with yourself. There's no way you can build healthy relationship with others if you cannot have um, a healthy relationship within yourself. I do know that there are times in our lives when we withdraw from people. You know, I do have my own quiet moments, as extroverted as I may seem or come across. You know, there are times people do withdraw. Now, I don't know if there, there is anyone who is in a perpetual state of isolation, except maybe coronavirus, your quarantine. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I, I really don't Corona think, has to feature, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I really don't think anybody is going to be all by himself or herself altogether. But if you're in a place where you have to withdraw in order to regain your energy, in order to rediscover yourself, so that as you're stepping out and engaging with others, you're able to add value. Because again, like you rightly said, you're not going out like, in, like you're begging to to have friends, to build relationships, right? So no matter how isolated you are, you may not have friends in that sense, but then you have to interact with people. You get to buy stuff from people. You get to, you know, do things that are dependent on others. So you really can't be in isolation. So those things are still there. The, this person, um, and let me say this, uh, Malawi 90. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the name. We wrote, wrote the name in Arabic. I can't read. Okay. I don't read Arabic. But this is a passage. Uh, Malawi 90 says, um, introverts find it difficult to start a relationship. Mm -hmm. How can a shy person start a relationship with someone? Then Don't worry. This will be uploaded. But I don't know. Two of you can weigh in on this. How can a shy person, especially an introvert, start a relationship with someone? Okay, so I, I want to correct a misconception because I teach on personality. Being an introvert is not being shy. Okay, so an introvert is not necessarily a shy person. Yes, there are two different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and let me give you a red flag. Being an extrovert does not mean yes. I'm self-confident too. Mm -hmm. That is why most times statistics shows that most bullies are extroverts because they use bullying to cover their inefficiencies. So let's clear that. Introvert, that's why being an introvert does not mean you're a good communicator, you're a bad communicator. Being extrovert does not mean you're, you're a good, good communicator. communicator. That is personality style. Introvert and extrovert has to do with where you get energy from. I get energy by seeing people, by talking to people. Introvert get energy by being themselves. They watch movie alone and they are fine. At the end of the day, the output for both parties is they want energy to do their work. My wife, she likes to watch a movie and she's fine. When she comes back home, she has energy to do other things at home. For me, and with my friends, we're drinking, we're watching March. That's where I get my energy from. So <laughs> it's all about where you get energy from. So people who are not energy experts or personality experts, they mix it up. It is never the same. So if you are shy, then you need to seek a coach to check for you those things that are brought about yourself being feeling shy. Maybe somebody has talked you down over time. Maybe somebody has made you feel lower than yourself. Or maybe it's, it's actually a self-talk that you have with yourself that has affected you over time. So that's actually what caused yourself being shy. It is not because you're an introvert. Mm. So, I, I mean, I'll just write on that. You know, I used to be a very shy person. Yeah, I was, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I used to be so shy. Remember back then, my school mother had to call me and said to me in Yoruba, like, if you keep going like this, you're not going to make it in life. I couldn't stand up for myself. I couldn't speak up for myself. But then the question was, you know, you, you find it difficult to express yourself in certain circles, but then you find yourself all out with your colleagues or your peers very expressive. So the, the challenge isn't you. The question is, how do you see yourself in different contexts? So you get into this circle and then you think either lower of yourself. And then when you're with your peers, you feel at ease because maybe you think you're at the same level, but mm. in this other context. So like you rightly said, you need to find out the underlying cause of that shyness. Because if you dig deeper, it really might be a self-esteem issue. So we, 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 we may not be able to sit here to say, this is how you deal with that. Because you're not shy. You say you're shy, but then you're married. You know, you have a spouse, you have kids, you have colleagues at work that you engage with, but then you step into that meeting and you're asked to make a presentation. And, you're and then you're like, oh, oh my goodness, how am Please. I going to pull this off, right? Mm. It's because you've assessed yourself in that situation and you've come down. And I tell people, you know, you know self-esteem is a different concept entirely. 
And it, it, it's actually from the word self-estimation. How do you estimate yourself? You know, how do you see yourself? How do you appraise yourself as an individual? They need to determine the kind of networks you feel comfortable to access and the kind of networks you, you refrain from accessing. Okay. Mm. Another question here from Muri. Mm -hmm. Muri says, why do built relationships die? Mm. I mean, despite nurturing with trust, loyalty, and your worth. Mm. What's it talking about built relationships dying? Yeah, as in you built a relationship and then with all the trust, with all the gifts, I mean, nurture and all of that, yet some relationships... Don't you, don't you build every relationship? Some are just likely to die because you didn't nurture them. Am I making any sense? Yes, you're, you're, you're making sense. And, <laughs> and to actually answer in the more the blunt way, there are times in which you need to kill some relationships. Absolutely. <laughs> So because be the value clear. is not flowing so both ways. Build every relationship, there are times you need to kill some relationship. So hold on. Um, mm. I do know that there are four kinds of people around each person. There are those who add to you. Mm -hmm. There are those you add to. Mm -hmm. There are those who take from you. Mm -hmm. There are those who are just occupying space. Mm -hmm. There are those who multiply you and there are those who divide you. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, Muri, I don't know which relationship you're talking about. Is it the one that... Um, uh, multiply you or the one that destroys you. I don't know which one you needed to end or ended, mm. but I'm assuming from what you're saying that for with nurture, with loyalty, with trust and with gifts, I'm assuming that you were giving, but it wasn't coming from the other mm -hmm. side. So mm -hmm. how do you handle that? Why do such relationships? Okay, so, Does it mean that there wasn't a relationship in the first place? Okay, so, so sometimes we assume, and we assume with familiarity, so, for example, having coached many people that have gone into divorce issues over the years, I've seen that sometimes it is not the point of divorce that divorce actually happened. The divorce has happened since. It's only showing up at that moment in time. So then I try to call it, sometimes we make comments, but we're not communicating. And I like to separate it. Sometimes we get familiar with people that we're not even doing anything with them. The wife comes in, okay, you're back. She goes in. We want to sleep, you're on the bed, she sleeps. Wake up in the morning, let me take my shoe, take the shoe. You are, you are making comments to each other, but you're not communicating at all. Nothing like, how was your day? Nothing like, come around, come and take it up. Nothing like, what happens to you? How do we go there? So you don't have those kind of discussions. So what happens is that, over time, what happens is that it starts dying. And it's not the day that is there that actually dies. It's that moment in which you stop feeding it. So if you check for biology students, so if you kill chicken, you see the chicken's leg moving. But the person that cut the head off knows that it's a matter of time. is already dead. So most times, we have starved the relationship over time. Okay, in mm. 10 seconds each, how do you sustain relationships? Starting with you, quick. Oh my God. So <laughs> this is what I would say. I would say that, you know, beyond just... Um, you know, seeking to build relationship for your own selfish reasons, you need to find out what people need and nurture it. Invest in people. Don't assume that what I'm giving to you is what you need. Find out what people need. Find out what matters to them because that's what real shows value or shows to them that you know them and you're ready to build and nurture that relationship. Okay, for me, how I will say it is that, please take note of this one. Your friends, you attract who you actually are. So when you see that your friends are not your kind of person, you're actually lying. They're actually your kind. So it has to be, be you, be yourself, and be valuable. When you are yourself, you know yourself, your kind of friend definitely will change. So you don't change your friend, you change who you are. When you change who you are, then your kind of friend definitely will get attracted to you. So be yourself, be real, and be valuable. Thank you very much. Someone actually posted one time, he said, a lot of people change their friends and partners because they're not ready to change themselves. <laughs> In other words, if you want to change anything around you, change, change you. Thank you. So we've been looking at, um, on you and living today, we looked at building relationships and we had Dupe Akin Shiyu, a certified coach and trainer, and Ido Ola Diamond, certified coach and trainer and head of Venture Gardens People Relations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sunrise will be back for the home stretch. Just stay with us.